Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. A couple weeks ago, I captured a 97 ball straight pool run on video. I really like this run because every rack is pretty close to textbook. Every rack opened up nicely and I had to shoot only one recovery shot the entire run. I misplayed my end pattern in the last rack, so there's a good lesson to learn there as well. The run plays in real time so you can see me thinking. During my commentary, I don't always remember what I shot a couple weeks ago, so you can try and guess along with me what I'm going to shoot next. Uh, my cell phone chimed in a few times while recording the run. Sorry about that. The table is an old Brunswick gold crown with 5-inch pockets. I think the cloth is too fast for straight pool, but I'm quite accustomed to it, so this is my table of choice as I continue to pursue my first 200-ball run in straight pool. Let's not waste any more time. Enjoy. I like the side pocket break shot in order to start my runs. You want to catch one of the head balls full, and you don't want to use any follow or draw on the cue ball. You'd like that cue ball to die and usually just go to a side rail and stop. So that was a medium strength stroke. I've still got a number of balls in the rack area, six of them. I'm looking at the one ball uh, as a... Uh, a shot to open up that cluster. I don't want to have to blast away at it and I don't want to shoot a sharp back cut. I know I can use the three ball in the lower left corner to set up for that one ball for just the right angle. I was hoping to do that here by using the eight ball to set up for the three, maybe going for eight and then that solid along the rail. But I've got too much angle on the eight so I go back to the uh, stripes on the left side of the table. But that's everything I'm thinking about right now. Just get on that three ball so I can get a um, not too sharp of an angle on the one. I'd like to do that before I shoot off too many of the other balls. Well, so it looks like I'm going to use the nine ball to get on the eight. Maybe I'll use that stripe into the side pocket to get on that side of the three. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Real important on shots like this, don't get straight in on the rail. Notice I'm keeping my cue ball two ball diameters away from the rail. Uh, whenever you have a ball near the rail, you can hold it or bounce the cue ball off from this angle that I have right here. Never, Almost never do you want to get straight in. So that shot was to get on the three ball, and I'm perfect on it now. So now I've got a very shallow angle on the one ball. It makes it really comfortable to pocket it. I don't really have an insurance ball, but I think I'm going to be all right. I want to kind of do a stun draw. That The highest stripe in the rack, I want to bump that over to the left for a break ball, hopefully. That worked out real well. Uh, either of those two stripes on the left could be a break ball, or the, the one is kind of low. Uh, the solid that came up on the near the top of the rack, that looks like the best break ball. So now there's seven balls left. The rack has been solved. There's no problems. Every ball is down table. There's just no excuse for not cleaning up here. The only thing you need to do is just real, be real careful, or not careful, be selective in the order you shoot these so that you get a good uh, angle on your key ball to ensure that you get a good break shot. Obviously, I don't have a traditional side pocket key ball. I think either of those two solids in the rack area or the 11, I think that's the 11, the, the stripe on the bottom rail, uh, any of those can work as a good key ball. So right now, you better make your decision. I'm not sure what I do here. I, I think the five would be the, get, that would be the best key ball right now. Obviously, I'm going to shoot the other solid below my break shot. That means that I've got to shoot the stripe on the bottom rail after shooting this ball. So I draw back to give myself, myself less, of, less of an angle. Looks like I could float straight up table, but I might hit the five if I do that. So maybe I'm going to go around it. Yeah, yeah, go around it. Nah, hit that a little soft. I may have decelerated. You want to you make sure you get on the right side of the ball. This is kind of a little bit tricky and not the best. So here I'm looking at where can my cue ball hit the rail and get a shot on that five. So if I can cut the five ball to my right and just go one rail position, it's 
It's real easy to come to center table and get on that break ball. I'm really ch thinking this through. I want to make sure that I don't uh, end up behind my break shot and have no shot on the five ball. I also don't want to get too low. So I'm going to make sure I hit the rail and just come off an inch or two so that I don't end up behind the break ball. Nice soft stroke with control. So there we go. Real, real simple matter to get on the break shot from here. You want to pick your spot. I'm checking the angle of the pocket. You want to pick your spot because a lot of times you're going to end up a little bit short or a little bit long. So you want to really know where the, where the center of that zone is so you don't end up too straight or with too sharp of an angle. So you're aiming for the center of the zone. So any time that you hit it a little bit too soft or a little bit too hard, you're still okay. I think this is pretty ideal right here. So my cue ball is nearly parallel to the rail. It's a really good angle because you can see the pocket at the same time as you see the aiming point on the object ball. I put a cue ball, another cue ball in the pocket that I'm going to shoot the break ball into. This is an old Brunswick Gold Crown and it has a tendency to spit balls out of the pocket if you hammer them really hard. So I must be planning on hit, hitting this shot pretty hard. It looks like I've got a high, let's take a look when I get out of the way. It looks like I've got a high break ball. The cue ball is going to hit the top ball. Oh, it's, it's not above the rack. So I think this will just be a stun where you just want to use center ball, either stop the cue ball on that corner, that top ball of the rack, or, or it'll, it'll deflect up table. You want to just come up to center table. So you're really trying to just kill all the speed and momentum off the cue ball. Uh, checking my angle there. It's always a smart thing to do. It, it, it really it, it removes any doubts from your mind about what you're doing with a break shot. And then, you, then you, your, your, your concentration is free to commit to just pocketing the ball. Yeah, so just a stun shot. Notice I didn't blast it either, and most of the balls came loose. So that's a good break shot. Um, once again, six, nope, five balls in the rack area. I've got two balls, a low ball on the left side that could be a break shot, and the nine, looks like the nine ball on the right side that could be a break shot. So I might use one of those or something else might come free. I'm looking at the shooting that ball on the side to sh in order to get on the stripe that's uh, in line with the other stripe along the side rail. It's a, a bit of a trouble ball, but it's nothing big. Uh, this, those two stripes are lined up pretty straight. I could shoot the combination if I wanted to. This is a pretty generous table. These are five-inch pockets, so I don't have any fear of making the, con the combination either. But now that's okay, so I'm going to probably shoot that stripe. No. Looks like I'm going to shoot the solid on here. So let's see what I'm planning. Okay. I think that was an attempt to get low on that, uh, looks like the three ball. Then I could send the cue ball directly into the cluster in the rack area and uh, very likely have a couple of insurance balls. But it looks like I'm going to do that now since my cue ball didn't stop on the rail. So this one you don't want to hit too soft. I didn't have an insurance ball. I want to make sure I get those balls open and get the cue ball clear. So mission accomplished. All of the balls are open now, so now I would like to run the rest of the rack without the, my cue ball touching a ball. I have one trouble ball, and that's the ball up table. Looks like the looks like that might be the two or the six. I can't quite tell. So I want to deal with that uh, as soon as I can, but it's not an emergency. There's uh, not going to be any trouble getting that up table ball and coming back down. So I want to pick a break ball right now, and I bet that's going to be the nine to the right side of the rack. So probably what I'm really focused on now is removing that stripe on the right side rail that's below the other ones. Let's see what I do. Okay. Well, the, the two balls that are in the rack area both go in the bottom right, 
And so now I've got a shot on this stripe ball to position the cue ball for either of those into the bottom right corner. So I think that's what I'll do. Yep. Now I could soft draw for the other solid into the bottom right. I could follow forward for the ball on the bottom rail. But let's see what I do. Yeah, so I'm going to go for the up table ball. That makes sense. That was a good time to go for the up table ball because it's real easy to come back down table to any number of these balls. So I'm looking at shooting that, that stripe on the right side rail. All I got to do is make sure I come back the uh, past the one ball and I'll have a shot on that. Okay, that looks good. Now I want to pick a key ball. Well, obviously, the one ball into one of the side pockets might be a good key ball. Maybe the stripe on the right side rail, the, the one near the center diamond, could be the key two ball to get on the one. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Let's see. Okay, obviously, I'm going to shoot the three next. The three is actually not a bad key ball. Imagine you had this angle with just the three and the nine left. It'd be real easy to get on that nine ball from here. Okay. I'm probably going to go five, one, and then shoot that stripe and then just bounce off the rail. That's not bad either. I could go from the five to the stripe on the side rail as well. Either of them would work, but obviously I'm planning to shoot that ball on the side. You want to make sure you come low. You want to be to the low side of the shot line to the side pocket because if you get on the high side, then your cue ball is going towards your key two ball, and that's no good. Even if you end up way too low, you can send the cue ball to the head rail and back down and get the right angle. But as it is, I'm real close to straight in. This is pretty routine. You want to make sure, again, like I said earlier, you want to make sure that you preserve an angle, even too much angle is way better than getting too straight on that ball into this in um, to uh, along the rail. Okay. Another angle close to parallel. It looks like I'm a little bit inside of the line that's uh, parallel to the rail f through the uh, break ball. That means I can probably use a high ball. Uh, shoot with topspin on the cue ball. We'll see what I do. See what it looks like when the rack gets up there. You notice I put that extra cue ball in the bottom right pocket this time where I'm going to shoot my break shot. I really like this table for straight pool except for the fact that the balls pop out. I've, I've had a, a ball pop out of the pocket even when there's a ball or two in it when you, when you strike it really hard. I've even tried putting a rag in the pocket and that works pretty well, but I, I had one pop out even with a rag in the pocket. So somebody needs to come up with an invention that will keep the, your break ball in the bottom of that Brunswick round pocket. This looks like I'm just going to blast this. I want to I use some uh, close to a full force break shot. I just want to... I want the cue ball to die in the side of the rack. I think that's the angle that I have, and it might come off to the side rail. Let's see what happens. Oh, it went down. Okay, but you notice that was the hardest I've hit the break shot yet. Uh, notice that the cue ball killed. It, it died. The speed of the cue ball died off the bottom rail. I guarantee you I had a lot of right English on that. Uh, right English from that side of the rack is going to kill your cue ball if it goes to the bottom rail, kill the speed, or if it goes to the side rail, it's going to send the cue ball down to the bottom rail so it doesn't get lost up table. So that's a good way to hit that break shot. It looks like here the only shot I have is this stripe. Uh, there's no way to control the cue ball without hitting other balls, so I'm just trying to hit that stripe ball full and then go from there. So this is a really great spread of balls from this break shot. I probably should be able to run this without my cue ball touching another ball. There looks, there's probably two or three or even four possible break balls. So I'm going to want to work on the outside. I'm getting rid of these two balls in the bottom left. 
Let's see what balls go into which pockets from the center of the table. That's what that was about. And I imagine I'm going to go up table and get the five in that stripe that's up table right now since everything has a pocket. Went a little bit too far for the 11. Well, I could shoot the 11 if I wanted to. Let's see what I do. Looks like I'm just going to shoot the 5 and bring the cue ball back center table, maybe shoot the 11 next, or one of the balls uh, on the bottom of the table. Yeah, I'll definitely shoot. Well, that 10's a real good break shot. I don't think I want to shoot that right now. And it looks like the, the one ball on that stripe are lined up to the pocket, so it's probably what I'm going to shoot. Yeah, checking for a gap between those balls. You want to know if they're frozen. If they're frozen, they're going to throw. If they're not frozen, they're not going to throw nearly as much, and so you need to know which is which so you know what you can do with the cue ball. Yeah, so I'm going to go up table for that 11. And this is just a soft draw straight back down table from the 11. Maybe get the one ball next. I think the two and the uh, a number of those balls go in either the lower left or the lower right, so there's not much of a problem. And of course, I'm preserving that the ball in the center of the table that could become a key key ball for the break shot into a side pocket. Doesn't have to. Um, in fact, the fact that there's no key two ball across from that ball in the center of the table means. It's not necessarily a very good key ball. Um, I, I bet the chances are better than 50% that I shoot something else. Use a different ball for the key ball. So I've got a lot of angle on this one. Really don't want to shoot that. I'm not going to be able to keep the cue ball under control. Looks like I could shoot the 7 if I wanted. Okay, so I've decided to shoot this ball in the side pocket. Oh, I bet I'm going to try to bring it right down on near the spot. Yeah, just like that. Not a good plan. Here's why you don't want to run into balls when you've got them all open. You just don't know what's going to happen. You might think it, it's real easy. Oh, real easy. I'll just come down, hit that seven. My cue ball will stop there, and I'll do lots of shots. It never works out the way you think. Very fortunate to have an easy shot into the corner pocket here. Um, I, I had a couple of other shots as well, but that was a pretty easy one. So a little bit fortunate there. Now, I'm, you, I hope you noticed I quickly checked the angle. That, that solid that I bumped into, it goes into the side pocket. So the only balls that are left in the center of the table, they all have pockets to go into. My goal here is minimal cue ball movement. And that's why I'm not shooting that, the last shot in, in playing position for another ball in a corner. This is what I call keeping the cue ball in a circle. You've got these balls that are, that are kind of arranged in a circle, the four that are left plus the two I just shot. And so I'm just keeping my cue ball inside that circle, right near those balls. Very minimal cue ball movement. And that's how you're going to have uh, near to 100% uh, possibility of getting on your break shot. And that's, that's what's happening here. So this is ideal. Checking my angle to make sure I get just a bit below the shot line on that three ball so that I can just slide up. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, maybe I'm going to do something else. Either the three or that 10, that stripe ball, could be a break shot. So maybe I'm planning. Yeah, it looks like I, I don't want to hold the cue ball. I'm going to go to the rail, and then I'll use one of those balls as a cue ball for the other, depending on exactly where the cue ball stops. Yeah. It's possible I felt like I had to hit that shot too soft to stay below the three ball. And, and you don't want to be slow rolling balls into pockets that you're going to get skids doing that. So I was able to hit that shot a little bit more positively. And now I've got an angle to bounce the cue ball off the rail and use the three for a break shot. Little note about the shot I just made. Don't be afraid to hit that ball. I had a slight angle, and I really needed to punch it and get it across the table for my break shot. But look at the angle that the cue ball came off that side rail. If, that, if my cue ball had traveled another foot, I'd still have a cut shot, and I'd still have a break shot with that three ball. So 
what you don't want to do is end up short and then you're back cutting it and you can't see the pocket. So don't be afraid to hit that cue ball and get your cue ball out into the center of the table. So this looks like an earlier break shot. We'll see when I get out of the way. Um, I probably just want to stun the cue ball into the top corner ball of the rack. Yeah, you could probably use follow. Sometimes if you use a high ball here, it, the cue ball skips off those the top balls of the rack and it curves around and goes heads right for that bottom left corner pocket. So I'm wary of that as well. I bet I'm just going to use a center ball stun and bring it back at center table. Let's see. Yeah. Just stun the cue ball off, off that head ball. They're going to open up. So I've got one, two, three easy shots, four easy shots to choose from. That's ideal. Uh, any of those three balls to the right side of the rack could be a break shot. So I'm not thinking about manufacturing one. I'm going to use one of those. I just need to figure out how to get those uh, two, three balls in the rack area open. I've got two balls up table. The, what you want to recognize immediately about those two balls up table is that the seven leads to that stripe in the side. So you can get any kind of angle on that seven ball up table, and it's real easy to get on that stripe in the side to get you back down table. So even though they're trouble balls, they're not trouble. They're very easy to deal with. So right now my focus is getting that, those two balls in the center, two balls in the rack area clear. Once that's done, it's clear sailing into the next rack. It looks like the stripe that's below that dark ball the stripe that's at the bottom right corner of the rack goes in the bottom left. And so I can use the 10 ball on the right side rail to position the cue ball on that ball. I'm not sure if that's what I do. Obviously, I'm clearing the up table balls first. And I, I overhit my position on that 7, but because of that ball in front of the side pocket, it didn't matter. It's real easy. I'm looking at getting on the nine, but that doesn't get you anywhere. I need to address those three balls, those three stripes in the rack area. That's what my focus is. And I don't want to disturb that either, either of those solids that are above the right side of the rack area because those are my break balls, potential break balls for the next rack. Yeah, you, know, you can't get straight in on the nine. Straight in on the nine would be nice. Then you could draw back a bit and shoot that stripe. I'm not sure what I end up doing. I think I should get a little angle on the 10 so I can just pull the cue ball back for that stripe at the bottom right corner of the rack. Is that what I'm doing? No. Ah. One ball on the side after this shot, but I'm not sure where that gets me. Unless if I'm gonna, unless if that one stripe goes past that dark ball, dark solid to the lower left. Hmm. It always looks different when you're at the table uh, versus looking at it from this camera angle. Okay. It looks like I'm going to use that solid to the right side of the rack, the one that's farther uh, as my break ball, and I'm going to use the other one to get on those balls in the rack area. So instead of shooting the one, I'm shooting the 11 in the side. Oh, well, nope. I have no idea what I'm doing now. Looks like I, well, I tapped the table. That's a little bit of frustration, so I probably didn't get the cue ball where I wanted I'm not sure what I was trying to do, but it looks to me like that stripe in the rack area goes in the side pocket, and that might be the best shot right now. Nope, I've got something else on my mind. Not sure what. Uh 
Oh, that's not a good shot. <laughs> I think that was a desperation shot. It would have been so easy to get trapped on a ball there where I wouldn't have anything. Luckily, I do have this ball on the side, and that's going to solve the rack. Everything's going to be open then. Yep. And that solid on the right side of the rack is going to be my break shot. Now, look. There's one, two, three. There's seven balls on the table again. Look how much work I put in to make. I made the break shot, which left 14. So those seven shots that I just shot were a lot of work all for this one goal to get these balls open and I finally got them open. Took seven shots to do it. Now, there's no excuse for not running these balls and getting on the uh, break shot. What you need, what I, what I think I should address here is that nine ball. The nine ball is a blocker to the break shot and it makes it difficult uh, to get your cue ball in the circle where you got everything under control. So maybe I'm gonna shoot the nine right now. Yeah, it looks like it. No, I'm going to shoot something else. Oh, I'm going to shoot this and float up and bring my cue ball. I'm playing position on two balls right here. I want my cue ball to float up by the break shot, by the break ball, because then I have a shot on that stripe if I didn't hit it and on the nine. So I'm playing position on more than one ball there. As it is, uh, uh, I got a bit fortunate to get a shot on the nine, but I would have had an, another shot as well. So now I can shoot the nine and just a matter of planning these last three balls. One ball, any of those three balls could be a good key ball. You just got to make sure you get the right angle. Okay, so shoot the stripe in the side. Depending on the angle, I can stun to the right and shoot the other stripe in the bottom left or I can follow past that stripe and shoot, shoot it in the lower right. Either way, it's easy to get, a, get the right angle on that one ball as my key ball. Yeah, so it's just a stun forward. I think I came a little bit farther than straight in though. Not sure. Yeah, I can't, I can't get my cue ball to go to the right unless I follow to the bottom rail. That's not ideal. You, when, you, when you're doing that, your speed control's gotta be perfect. One option here, if I have the right angle, would be to just stop the cue ball or roll it forward just a bit and just accept that long straight-in shot in the corner, and I can just stun the cue ball forward for a perfect break shot. As it is, I think I have a slight angle to the right on this stripe, so I'm really, really making a firm decision on exactly what path I want my cue ball to take. Do I need any right English? Do I want any right English? Notice the, the point I pointed to was a little bit farther away uh, from the one ball. The farther you get from the one ball, the more margin of error you have to get close enough to straight in to the side pocket to just follow forward. As it is, I came, I ended up low. Um, if you're going to miss straight in position, you want to be low because you can do this. You can just go to this, the head rail and back down. When you shoot this shot, just adjust... Your, the height of your Q-tip on the cue ball. No left or right English. You try to put left or right English on that shot and it's just going to become really, really hard to control. But if you just uh, stay on the vertical axis of the cue ball, you can really judge the path of the cue ball real accurately. Got another high break ball, but this time it's a little bit farther from the rack. And my cue ball is a little bit uh, on the outside of the parallel line to the rail that runs through the break ball. What that means is I've, I've got less angle than I, than I might want. What it means is I need to apply more power to the break shot if I want to spread the balls wide. I wouldn't be surprised if I just use a, a high ball with outside English again. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. I am looking at where I'm going to hit the rack, although with the object ball that far from the rack, 
you're going to get some curve. There's enough time for the cue ball to curve off the tangent line, so you're not necessarily going to strike that rack exactly where you think you will. Oh, it looks like I'm just going to power draw. little Thorsten Homan shot. Yep. Well, that was more of a stun than a draw, but yeah, worked out beautifully. This is a really great result. Every single ball, uh, there's no balls touching. Every single ball is open. So I've got two balls up table. I've got one, two, possibly three potential break balls. My goal here is to pocket every ball without running into another one with the cue ball. I want to shoot every one where they lie. So now the, the goal is to clear paths to the pockets. That's what this is all about. Those three balls near the bottom left corner probably could all be removed. They wouldn't necessarily have to. I could use, I could leave one so that once, really what I want to get at is those three balls that are closest to the rack area. So if the cue ball is in the center table, I can shoot that solid at the low left part of the rack area. And then leaving one of these balls near the bottom rail gives me something easy to play position two from that ball. I'm not sure if that's what I'm going to do, though. Let's take a look. Also, those two balls that are closest in the rack area, they might be lined up to the bottom right pocket, and I might, I might just shoot them a combination. Or I could shoot that ball nearest to the foot spot in the side pocket right now and that just opens up everything you don't have to you could you could shoot this nine this uh, ball near the bottom left pocket and come around but i bet i shoot that ball on the side nope not gonna boy if i was gonna shoot this today i'd shoot that ball in the side pocket well, i guess i'm going to the up table balls first So now that I'm looking at it, what I see is that stripe, the, the 10 ball, it's a potential break ball. But if you get somewhat straight in on it, yeah, right there, the 10 ball leads to those other two balls or to the five at least. It's possible that other solid goes into the bottom left corner as well. But you're looking, just like when you're looking for a key ball for a break shot, you're looking for key balls that get you on other balls while you're running the rack. So now I'm looking at the combination. There's so many possibilities. This, this could be run a number of different ways. The main thing you want to do is choose the shots that you're most comfortable with and that you're going to keep that cue ball under control. That's what's important. Like I said, all the balls are open. There is no excuse for not clearing the table. So this ball and the next one set me up for the 10. So now I'm checking on that angle for the 10 oh, or for the combination. Either one works. Combination is nice because then you, you're preserving two break balls instead of just one. So it gives you more options. Yep, definitely going to shoot that combination. When you shoot a combination like this, if it's not perfectly straight, you want to make sure where that the first ball of the combination is going because I don't want it to slide forward and tie up the 10 ball. So I'm sure I've took a look at that and decided where it's going to go. It looks like it, it is going to go to go to the right a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, so I made sure to get that ball clear. I didn't want to tie up the 10. Now, which ball is my key ball? Hmm. I like drawing the cue ball back and shooting that uh, two ball in the bottom right corner pocket. I think that gives me the most options. Because if I don't get just right on the two, I can always shoot that other strike ball in the bottom left corner and go from there. Let's see what I do. I could shoot that stripe on the left side right now as well. Yeah, we'll draw back. See, even if I come too far, it's real easy to hold the cue ball, go to the side rail and out. This is a classic position. I have a 
potential break shot on both sides of the rack. Either one of them can be used as the cue ball for the other by sending the cue ball two rails out of the corner pocket. So if I had gotten an angle on the stripe to the right side of the rack, I could shoot it and go around the other break ball on the left side of the table. But as it is, I have this angle, and it's just, just so easy. This is a favorite of Mike Siegel. He loved to uh, cut a ball to one, a one side and go around his break ball. It's really hard to not get good position on a break ball doing that. It's a great key ball. Once again, I got an outside angle on my break shot. I prefer outside angles to inside angles. I know I've seen a lot of players, Thorsten Holman among them, who, who tend to have a lot of inside angles where the cue ball is, where, where he's doing a back cut on the break shot. I prefer to see the pocket. Maybe because I've got such long arms, I've got leverage. I can, I'm not afraid of powering into the rack. I don't know. But I like to be able to see the pocket like this break shot. And... I'm sure I'm going to check the angle, but this is this is a classic. Uh, you want to shoot low and outside, not real low, and the cue ball should just go right to the side rail, unless if I intend to put a full full draw stroke and draw it up to the head rail. I don't think I'm going to do that. I might, but let's see. This looks like it'd be better to just go to the side rail. Outside spin's going to kill the cue ball on that side rail. Nope, it's going up table. Yep. <laughs> Got a big cluster in the center of the table, uh, two of them. So in this instance, you want to be a little more aggressive. I've got this ball hanging in the, in the bottom right corner pocket. I might shoot that and just send the cue ball. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to. Another option would be to cut the 13 and go into those, knowing I have that ball hanging there as an insurance ball. But I have other insurance balls. Ooh, that's not a good shot. This is why that was not a good shot. Even though I thought I had insurance balls to the left side of the rack, my cue ball hit the right side of those clusters, and now I got a tough shot. Looking at it today, I think I would have preferred to shoot the 13, go into the cluster, knowing that I have that ball hanging in the bottom right corner as an insurance ball. Okay, that's a good shot. That's just a recovery shot. Try and make the ball and get the cue ball into a better spot. Notice on that shot uh, that I just made, I didn't use a big backstroke. That's just a recovery shot. You're just trying to make the ball, and I'm not trying to control the cue ball at all. I just want to make the, that object ball. So I'm just using a short backstroke and keeping my cue tip right on that aiming point on that object ball. Give, me my, give myself the best chance to make it. Now I'm back in control. I've got four balls at the top of the rack area that need open, but I might be able to shoot them. Looks like the top two go in the left side pocket and then the other two stripes go in the lower left. So it's not a it's not a urgent matter to go crashing into those balls. You wanna you wanna think about what you're doing. How can you open up paths to the pockets? And I've got that one ball on the right side of the rack as a break shot. I might bump something over and get a better one, but I know I've got that break shot. Ooh, interesting. I didn't. I thought I was going to slide over above those balls, but I stayed below them. Boy, can you guess what I'm going to do? Because I'm not sure. I could shoot the six, use the, looks like the eight ball, the bottom left corner pocket. To, yeah, shoot that ball to bring the cue ball back to center table. Then I'll have a shot on that. Looks like the 14 ball stripe. Yeah, right there. And bump those open. Really low risk of not coming out with a shot after that. You can just do a soft follow. It should have a shot on the 7 or one of the balls that I bump. 
And when looking at it, it doesn't look like anything's going to tie up my brake shot. And I'm looking at it right now to see where do I think they're going to go. They don't always go where you think, but you, but you want to look at them and, and make a decision. Where do you think you're going to, those balls are going to go? Because that tells you how hard you, need, you want to hit it and whether you want to hit withdraw, follow, stun, whatever. Yeah, so that was a soft follow. So I've got the seven ball, and I've, I've got that, looks like the three ball in the right side pocket as well. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, guess what? Seven balls on the table. It took seven shots to get everything open. That's really, that's really typical. So now, once again, now I'm to the point where I don't have any danger. I do have balls that are kind of blocking other balls, so I've got to plan this carefully and, and uh, find a way to get on that break shot. Can you see the gears working in my head right there? I think I'm going to shoot the seven and try and get on the three ball in the side pocket. That's what it looks like I was looking at. Nope. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, that was a well-controlled shot. That didn't have to turn out that good, but I don't think I could have. Bumping that ball, you really don't want to bump balls, but I think I had a real short path to travel, and it was a high percentage play. And I had numerous, numerous ways to end up with a shot. It was, it, I think that was a low-risk bump. But when you can avoid it, you should. But that, that getting moving that ball up really just opened everything up. Now I can shoot the, shoot the five, then shoot one of those balls in the side, shoot the other stripe, and then use the other ball in the side or the corner as a uh, key ball for the break shot. Uh, give some thanks to that generous pocket there. I really overcut that shot. That can happen when you're trying to just feather a ball down the rail like that. Now I want to check my, yeah. Just want to make sure I don't have too much angle when I'm cutting that 10. I want to be able to either either just tap that 10 in to shoot the 3 in the side or have enough angle where I, where I can bring the cue. Yeah, I'm going to bring the cue ball straight back up table. I want to come right to center table. I'll have close to a straight in shot on the 3. Oh, this is better. This is much better. Now I don't have to risk getting the wrong angle on the 3. I know that when I, I I know that I can easily judge the angle to come right there for my break shot. That's a much better plan. That's an example of how of how a ball that's near the bottom rail between the uh, near the center of the bottom rail between the two diamonds from the corner pocket. Uh, it's a good key ball. Uh, any you can have either angle on that ball, and you can send the cue ball off the bottom rail straight up. You can send the cue ball follow forward to the side rail and out, or you can uh, cut the ball and go one rail off the bottom rail, or you can spin the cue ball two rails out of the corner. So those are uh, don't overlook those. Those are really good cue balls from lots of different angles. So far, these racks have been pretty straightforward. I've had very traditional break shots, been able to get on them real well. It's been r relatively trouble-free for straight pool racks. Um, I'm, I know that I don't get over 100 in this run, and that's, I'm not very happy about that. Uh, and I, and I, I, remember, I remember why, and it's a really good lesson. So I'm, I'm not sure how many racks this is so far as it's five or six, but uh, it's coming up pretty soon. The end of the run is coming up before too long. And it's because of end pattern play. A mistake that I make in the end pattern. So this is the same thing, low right. I, I don't think I'm going to draw this up table, am I? Come on, go to the side rail. There we go. That's beautiful. Outside English on the cue ball kills the... The speed of the cue ball on that side rail, you're going to have a shot in one of the corner pockets of the side almost every time. This is an ideal result. Looks like i got to go get a drink of water or something. 
Um, this time there's no balls in the rack area, but those one, two, three, the five balls that are near the rack, on first glance they look like a cluster, but they don't look like a, oh, i got to clean the cue ball. But they don't look like a cluster to me. I call those a shooting gallery. If you can get your cue ball to the right side of those balls, they go in the bottom left corner pocket. So, again, because I have a clustered rack, they're not they're uh, they're fairly open. They're, there's not any big packs of balls. Again, I would like to run this table without bumping another ball, if possible. So that's I bet that's the first thing on my mind. I'm, I'm seeing that shooting gallery. I've already got two pot potential break balls in the nine and that stripe on the right side. One of those balls just to the right of the rack could also be a break, break ball. But I want to get behind that shooting gallery. Before those balls go, I need to make the two balls that are near the lower left pocket. So that's what I'm looking at right there. By recognizing what, I, what balls I need to deal with, that tells me which shots, that informs me which shots to shoot first. Another player might shoot the 10 ball because it looks like such an easy shot and crash into those. But you're removing a potential break ball and you're potentially creating more trouble than uh, rather than opening things up. So Now, you know, I bet I'm tempted to, to cut this ball in and send the cue ball into that shooting gallery. I hope I don't because that's not a good idea. Even though there's an insurance ball. No, nope. this is much better. Now I just need to find a way to get around to the other side of the shooting gallery after shooting this seven. Or I could shoot one of those balls. One of the shooting gallery balls could go in that right side pocket as well. I don't like that as much though. Okay, preserve an angle on the five. Oh, looks like I wanna get right there. I don't like that because what's my insurance ball? Uh, uh, not insurance ball, but you want something that's easy to play position. You don't want to be having to slam a ball into the side pocket to get position. Looks like I can just draw it back a little for that three ball. Or I might bump the ball near the foot spot up a little bit. I'll have a number of shots from there. Oh, nope, I'm taking the three ball now. Good decision. Looks like I'm shooting the three to get behind that shooting gallery. Yeah, much better plan. Little drawback. Okay, so I'm not gonna use this as a, as a break ball, and that's why I drew the cue ball off the rail rather than just a little nip draw. Oop, not happy with that, I drew too far. But, uh, I can shoot the, looks like the two ball, and use the other ball, the ball below it, to stop the cue ball, and the two remaining balls both go in the left side pocket, so that's an easy shot. A safe shot to shoot. Yeah, just like this. Very little risk there. Notice I didn't have to pound it. Just a nice smooth stroke. Keep the, keep everything under control. Oh, this is it, guys. This is the end of the rack. What I'm looking at right now is the two balls in the rack area both go in the bottom there. Yeah, both go in the bottom right corner pocket, and I want to send the cue ball two rails to shoot those two balls in the lower right corner pocket. Oh. Oh, just the one. So I'm removing one of them to get this angle to send the cue ball two rails around a center table. Now that's very reasonable. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It may not be the best pattern, but there's so many, I mean, I still have those other balls near the side pockets. It's hard for this to go wrong. So, but it did go wrong. I wanted to get closer to straight in on this ball into the bottom right corner pocket, but I didn't. So I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll shoot the 13 in the side, draw back to there then I can stun this ball up 
and use the other ball as the obvious key ball for my nine ball break shot. Easy, right? Unless if this happens. Way too thin on that ball to just feather it in. I mean, it can be done, but really made the shot really difficult. I think this was because of poor planning. I don't think it was a good idea to come two rails out of the corner to try and get on that ball back this way. I could have done it in a much more controlled fashion. Now, as it is, I still should have gotten out and gotten to the next rack, but I let it get to me that I'm out of line. After shooting all those racks and keeping the cue ball in line, it took just one shot, and the cue ball came 12 inches too far, and now I'm out of line. I'm, I'm not quite straight on this ball into the corner, but... I'm just going to roll it forward because now I can shoot the ball near the foot spot and go two rails out of the corner. So I don't think there's any pro that would miss this shot. It's, it's a long shot. It's a difficult shot, and you're trying to control the cue ball to get on the break shot. But it's, it's, a, real, it's a real high percentage shot. I just happen to miss it. But other than the, the 13 ball last rack, that may have been the toughest shot I had this entire run. And that's the hallmark of uh, a long run in straight pull. You're not going to run a lot of racks if you don't keep that cue ball under control and those long, difficult shots to a minimum. Anyway, 97 balls, still a real good run. Happy with that. Not happy I didn't get into the triple digits, but uh, it still feels good when you can put those racks together because you know that tomorrow is another day and you can do it again. Hope you enjoyed that. My 124 ball run with commentary that is included with my book has more recovery shots and trouble than this run, so it's probably more informative as to the types of things to avoid. But this run was a good example of opening the rack well, staying out of trouble, patiently approaching clusters with insurance balls, and good planning, except for the very last end pattern. Darn it. Well, my book is available now at uh, www.shortstoponpool.com, and thanks for watching. See you next time.